So in this video, we're going to bundle up this Express application right here for development and production. As an example, to run it in production, we just run npm start. And what this has done is bundle our Express server with Webpack and then run the bundle with Nodemon. So what it'll do is it'll output server.cgs, which is run by Nodemon. And this was created by Webpack. And we'll go over all this in this video. And of course, then we can just send curls to this server. So Witceptor says hello. And now we also have this for production. So say we run npm run build, this will bundle up our entire server application, including the node modules into one file called server.cjs. And then we can just run it with node dist server.cjs. And we can also enable source maps so we get better errors. And we run this. And now we can see we're running once more and we can send curls, or actually it's in production, it's one, two, three, five. And we get our responses back. And of course, this will output a disk folder with our bundled server code. So all of this, including our node modules, just this file, and then also a map, source map file, so we can get a better stack trace. Before I get into this video, let me talk about why we bundle server code. Well, not everyone bundles server code, but bundling server-side code is useful for reducing the size of the code on the server. And this is particularly useful for serverless systems, where in AWS, for example, AWS lambdas are constantly being deployed or cold starting. If you don't know, a cold start is essentially the delay that occurs when a serverless function is invoked for the first time or after a prolonged idle period. Another reason is that it reduces the amount of files that need to be managed. So as you can see, instead of having all these files, so we have our services, server, and a much bigger application would have a lot more than just these services. If we bundle it, all we need to worry about is this single file right here. And we don't have to worry about our node modules like this either if we include them in the bundle. And a common though outdated reason to not bundle server-side code is debugging. So bundling server code used to make the debugging process more difficult, but source maps in modern bundlers and languages negate this, which we can see right here. If we enable our source maps, and I have this error right here, and if we contact this route and we look at the stack trace, because of our source map, we can see the exact location. So it's server.js line 34, which is right here. But this is what we're gonna build in this video. So to start coding, just open up an empty directory. And the first thing we're gonna do is initialize this as an npm project with npm init es6-y. This creates our package.json file with a type set to module. So we can use more modern import export syntax. Next, let's just install express. And then we're gonna install three development dependencies, which are .env, nodemon, webpack, and webpack CLI. Of course, we will use webpack to bundle our node application into a single file. We will then run this file with Nodemon. So in other words, Webpack will look for changes in the source code, while Nodemon will look for changes in the bundle. Now let's create our environment variables, which is gonna be in a file called .env. This will set the location of our Express server. Specifically, we're gonna have the host's local host, specify a port, and then just the overall URL. And sorry, this will be our development. So I'm gonna rename this to .dev.env. And then we're gonna have one for production, which will be .prod.env. In our production environment variables, the only thing we're gonna change is just the port, because we're running both of these on localhost. But to add a little bit of difference, we're just gonna change the port 1234 in dev, 1235 in production. And now let's start coding, which is gonna be pretty simple. I'm just gonna have a source folder with a file called server.js, and I'm gonna paste in some code. And all it's gonna do is create an express app. Here, we're, here we load our environment variables. And then for each route, we're just gonna have a service that we're gonna spin up and use it to say hello. So nothing crazy, and then we're just gonna listen here. And so as these services aren't really the main point of the video, I just created them real quick. So here we have our say hello service, which is a constructor and returns this.name says hello. And then our other services just extend this say hello service, provide a string to the superclasses constructor, which will then just cause it to say name, set the name, and then return say hello. So we have that for Witceptor service, which is my Chrome extension, if you're curious, with code service, and then code service. And then we just import all these services up here. But so now let's focus on bundling this application. And so the way we're gonna do this, of course, is with Webpack. First, we'll do development. So we're gonna have webpack.dev.cjs. And we use .cjs because in package.json, we have the type set to module. But in our Webpack file, we want to use the older module.exports as opposed to import export. So CJS stands for common JS. But here's our Webpack development configuration. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna use .env to load up our environment variables. 
Then we're going to set the mode to development. Our target will be node because this is going to be a backend app. If you were using something on the front end like React, it would be, say, web. We're going to have a dev tool for inline source map so that we can reconstruct the code to get an actual stack trace. So this will create a source map that allows us to get the actual stack trace of things as opposed to just a line in the bundle. We set our entry point, which is where to start building the bundle from, which is our server file. And then our output, we're gonna output everything to a folder called dist. We're gonna clean it out every time we run this, and we're gonna call the file server.cjs, because in it, it's gonna use module.exports. And then we're gonna load our environment variables into our bundle, or into our app using Webpack's environment plugin, where we just pass in the keys of process env, which is what .env does up here. It loads them into process.env. And then right here, I just have this ignore warnings because the module lib view.js inside express will emit the message the request depends on the user's expression. And we just want to ignore this warning as it doesn't impact our bundle, but kind of floods the console with an annoying message. And now let's create our production webpack file, which will be pretty similar actually. So once once again, I'm just going to paste this in here. So we load, every, load our environment variables as .env, but now we set the mode to production, which will minify our code and make it a much smaller. We set our dev tool to source map because we still want to output a source map so we can debug our server code. So we want to have a source map outputted because if we didn't and we got an error out in production, we wouldn't be able to see the actual stack trace. And now for our entry point, we're going to use source server.js again, and we're going to output to the dist folder, clean it. Everything else is the same. The only main difference is setting this here, the source map, and also what environment variable file we're going to be using. So now we just need to create our npm scripts. So what I'm gonna do is inside package.json under scripts, let's just change, add this in here. And so what's going on here is first we use Webpack to watch for any changes in our product, in our bundle. So if we make, so our entry point is server.js. If any changes happen in this, which also means the files that it's importing, so any of our services here, then Webpack will rebundle it with this configuration. And then we're going to use NodeMon with enabled source maps to run the entry point, which is up here. We actually need to change this to dist and then server.cjs, because when we do this, we can use this dot right here to represent the entry point. And then notice this right here is specific to Mac and Linux. So if you're using Windows, you will have to use a separate NPM library. I think it's called NPM parallel, but or something like that, but it will allow you to do the same here. But on Win Mac and Linux, you just have to run this, which essentially means run in the background. So we're going to run this to bundle everything in the background. And then with NodeMon, we're going to run our entry point. But in production, all we're going to do is just bundle it and output this bundle. And then I'm going to use this Mac command, or this Unix command, that will get the size of our dist folder. Of course, you would want to replace this. After building it, you could have a start production script, which would then run something like node, enable source maps, and then just server cjs and that would run everything but enough of that let me actually show you the code so first let's run this in development it might make more sense when we're doing this so i'm going to just run npm start and we might get a module not found because webpack hasn't finished bundling before node man no bond is looking but after it's done that it'll after node webpack is finished no mom will reload and now we can see it's running on http 1234 if we make a change in here so let's do let's just console.log install my Chrome extension with Scepter, which link in the description, we can see it's outputted right here. So we can see our live changes. Let's just paste this a few more times. And when we save, it'll restart and print it out here. And so this is all working because Webpack is looking for bundle or changes inside our application. And then NodeMon is looking for changes in the bundled output file. And now let's just do production. So all we have to do for this is npm run build. And so it'll start building everything. And then we've output everything successfully and we can see our server fo folder or file is 592 kilobytes. And then here's our map and just some licensing stuff. And you might wonder about the size of 592 because we don't have really a lot going on here. Most of that will be coming from node modules. So this fold file right here also contains all the node modules right here. If you didn't bundle them in this, then you would just have to install those on whatever machine you have this file on, but we've included them in the bundle. If there are certain modules that you don't need, you can make them external by using something like externals and check out the Webpack documentation, but you can ignore things kind of like this, or you can use some NPM packages to also ignore certain packages and they have, they make it a bit easier. But after running build, 
when we have our server.cjs file, we can just run node dist server.cjs, and now we're running out in production. But of course, you would want to also tag on, you would want to tag on enable source maps like this. So if we get an error, we can see the original stack trace. So say I do a curl to localhost 1235 dash error. So the way I set that up is this route will just throw an error. We can see our actual location. So server.js server 34 9. So here it is, line 34. And we get this because of our source maps. If we didn't have source maps, it would just show some random location in the bundle that would be meaningless. But this is how you bundle a Express app for development and production. If you like this kind of content, check out my courses linked in the description. Also check out my Chrome extension Scepter, also in the description. Besides that, thank you for liking and subscribing. Take care.